Hello, Mixed Nutcases. This is Nuke Joss. And sometimes your parents tell you, stop being inside, go outside and play some games. So we're going to be your parents today and we're going to tell you to play some games. No, we're going to talk about some games. But with me, my favorite friends to play with. Hi, I'm Car. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, tech. You can tell this was unplanned. Right? <laughs> I'm still tech. He's still tech. And? Hello. I am Sonorous Vox, the man of a thousand promises that is delivered upon exactly none of them. And and today you're going to deliver on talking about games with us. I hope. I In, hope. Indeed. And you're not just here to just start talking about, well, what I really like are snowy egrets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do know I like them quite a bit. I mean, who doesn't? Who They're doesn't? snowy egrets. But, uh. They lay their nests and <laughs> Tech, tech, this was your idea for, for an episode. Why don't you share with everyone what your focus here is? I want to talk about, uh, the games that we played as kids and specifically to, uh, the listeners out there. Let us know the games that you played as kids. And I don't mean video games. I don't want to talk about video games. I, we all know, like, the, the generation that we are now, like, um, uh, Vox, are you 40 yet? Well and good 40. Well and good into your 40s. Okay. I, I just, that's yeah. a pointed question in the middle of a podcast. Yeah. Are you 40 yet? Are you 40 I am, oh. I am, I am late stage millennial gen or a late stage gen X. Yes. So, so. That, in the late stage gen X that we all are, uh, like we grew up in the Nintendo generation. Like we had Ataris, we had whatever, then we went into Nintendos. And so video games were a big, big part of at least me growing up. They, they really were, but some of us weren't allowed to have some them. Some of us weren't allowed. And I, they were the devil. Right. And I wasn't, uh, and my video, ta- video game time was severely, severely restricted by parents who thought they were bad for my eyes. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Doc told me it has nothing to do with that. It's all about the shape of your eye and the fact that I got big eyes and he's got little eyes. So, um, uh, so, but I suck it, mom. I, I spent a lot of my childhood outdoors and I spent a lot of my childhood playing a bunch of really silly games that, that, um, well, I tried to play them again as an adult, and uh, some hilarious things happened. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that too. But the thing is, is that I grew up. I grew up outside. I grew up playing a lot of really fun games, whether it was by myself or with my friends. And um, I, I, I kind of wanted to get your uh, your perspectives because, well, Nutty, you grew up in a different country, mm. and well, Vox, you grew up in both countries, and you sort of moved around a lot more than I did. So uh, different communities have different versions of these games, and. Mm. Well, the first one I want to bring up is um, we played a game. I, I played this in, in multiple cities growing up in Canada. I'm, we played a game called Wall Ball. I am already cringing. <laughs> <laughs> so we played a game called Wall Ball mm-hmm. um, where you have a tennis. You need a tennis ball and players. Normally, we would play in a group of maybe four to six in two teams, so a team of two to three. And the idea was you throw the ball at the wall. And then somebody else from the other team has to catch the ball and throw it back. But if they fumble the catch, they have to run to the wall. Now, there's two variations of the game. So if they fumble the catch and they drop the ball, they have to run to the wall. You have to grab the ball and throw it. Now, if you hit the wall before they reach and touch it, well, that's a strike against them. Three strikes, they're out, they lose the game. The other variant of the game, which was also known as, can can I say the three-letter A word? Nutty? Can what say, was this game called? Can I say the three letter A word on your podcast? I mean, not, not usually, but if it's the title of something, it not was, slang. The game was called Red Ass because instead of throwing the ball at the wall, what you, you would do is as the person is running to the wall, if you hit them in the back with the ball, that was a strike against them. Indeed. So yeah, it was called Monsters. Yeah. 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 No, this is murder with a wet tennis ball. And, but the thing is, is it really was dependent upon having the dexterity of a grade school child to play because you needed to fumble the catch to make the main dynamic of the game play. I tried to play this as an adult, but the thing is, is 
our dexterity, our manual dexterity is so good. Like we sat there playing, like whipping tennis balls at a wall. And the thing is, with the dexterity of an adult, you're so good at like one handed catches and just like behind the back and under the leg and throwing them at the wall that it didn't matter. The game didn't occur because nobody fumbled the catches. And then we were so fast that you could just reach forward and touch the wall before somebody got a chance to throw it. But when you're a slow, clumsy kid in grade school, uh, oh man, uh, the sting of a wet uh, of a wet uh, tennis ball across the back of the shoulder blades was I, uh, something that I grew up with a, a I, lot. I will say, you and I have completely different arcs of body dynamics okay. <laughs> because now, because now I would fumble that ball every time, <laughs> and if I try and run, well, you know, if I try and run, I pull a calf muscle, so. Yeah, right, it would be a completely is, different game now. Like when I said, when I tried to play it again as an adult, I meant a man in his 20s. Okay. Now that I'm in my 40s, yes. it's like, yeah, that's a different story. I, I'm trying to imagine, okay, so one, I will pull my shoulder and my neck when I try to throw the ball. And then that first that first stride when I try to sprint for the wall, I will blow my hip again. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you what you describe yes. as wall ball mm-hmm. sounds like somebody took handball. Yes. And when we're going to be horrible people <laughs> and, 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 and terrorize each other, we're going to turn this into a game of bullying. Cause I okay. have seen the okay. handball. Now, I just, where you don't what, close your hand and you sort of swat the I, ball. I do want to share that I am from New York where handball is serious business. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if you've seen videos of what it's like to go and play basketball at a local park, mm-hmm. imagine the same. For handball, do also they, bocce. Do they, um, do they play handball at Crackers Whack Park? That park is way too small to play anything. You know that. It just has a Keith Haring in it. I mean, actually, there is a basketball court, but still, my favorite, I mean, my favorite park in all of the world. But, but like, <laughs> like our every school I went to had a handball court, and like it wasn't just it wasn't just a wall that you played against. It was like legit, but. You couldn't get on there during recess because it was so filled. And, and as you got older, it was, are you tough enough to hang out over there? Are you tough enough to hang out over there? And it wasn't because they were hitting you in the back with a ball. It just was, you, you are not tough enough. Um, but this sounds like so, so. And the thing is, is mm. I, I was a bullied kid. I was bullied pretty hard through most yeah, of the Yeah, but you were a fast kid. No, I really wasn't. I didn't get fast until after high school. I, yeah, I, I was fast as a grade schooler, but at about at about like grade five or six, everybody else shot up. Uh, but, so I got slow in middle. You school. were the late bloomer. Well, I I, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't uh, start growing until like fifteen sixteen. So but wall yeah. ball was one. Sorry, uh, just, I'll, I'll okay, quick. good. Yeah, Is that wall wall ball was one of those games that. I was good at, and I never saw any bullying because it was such a tit-for-tat game that you are going to have to succumb to the punishment whether you're the big kid or not. And it was a very equal playing field. Everybody played it. Everybody had fun. I have a feeling Vox is about to tell us what it's like being bullied during wall ball. (laughs) No, no. What I was going to say is wall ball is is symbolic of a – of. Either it's a generational or it's a Canadian thing. It's probably a Canadian thing that uh, we're we're in a country where you got to have thick skin because you're going to freeze if you don't. And a lot of our games when we were kids were they involved pain. Yeah. They involved yeah. inflicting pain upon each other, and it was bonding. That's what it was. You would you would I I have games where I would play them where typically I was the bullied kid until I stepped into that field of play and showed how tough I was Mm -hmm. or how overly medicated and not feeling pain I was. (laughs) And then I became something of a local legend there. It was how you proved that you were tough enough to step up to the game. And I got out of bullying for that because yes, I'd still got bullied, but at a certain point, other bullies would come up and stop my bullies. Uh, (laughs) Uh, I will preface a lot of what we talk about here with um, any game that involved a ball just turned mm-hmm. into let's hit nutty in the head with the ball because I was also a bullied kid. Right, but you, but you yeah. have you have you have vision pro- you have vision differences. No, it wasn't just that, that I was uncoordinated. No, it was let's target her. 
you know, dodgeball, yeah. dodgeball is, 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 will give you flashbacks if you were the bullied kid because everybody get, you, there's that one scene from Freaks and Geeks where everybody just throws all the balls at Bill. That was me, but they aimed for my head. Um, no. Th- that being said, and I, I apologize for the trauma that I inflicted upon you for this, but when when we were dating and you came to visit us, me and my friends, didn't we take you to play squash? Yes, you did. I got you in a squash court. Yeah, that was that, that was a game that I had not played before. Right, but with 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 a lack of depth perception and the inability yeah. to switch focuses quickly. Uh, but you guys didn't aim the ball. My, see, that's the difference between being a kid and being an adult. I knew you weren't going to come out and try to hit me in the head. No. Um, I will say uh, where I grew up, the only squash courts I ever saw, you had to be really wealthy to get on them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. That's- there's like, like handball, that's a whole other thing. And then squash, squash was like, ooh, 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 you need your white shorts to go in there. Yeah, but so- like I played squash with you at just a local rec center, like, Everybody plays squash up here. It's not, it's not, yeah. and not, and not racquetball, squash. Yeah. Which is, I guess it's a Canadian thing. I know in the United States, racquetball is a lot more, a lot with, with the, the, it's very, it's very uh, narrow. It's sorry. It's very uh, shallow, but very wide. And I think okay. racquetball is more, at least in my experience at the clubs that I have some experience being around not even being members of like new york city racquetball club is is like world famous um it's more of a yeah. every man kind of a game whereas squash was the elite game you know you the squash courts were usually at country clubs yeah. or you had to have a special key to get in the building sure. clubs and but, yeah but not always and everybody somebody's going to correct me i know this i'm just saying in my experience in the circles that i traveled you might go oh i'm from new york and we had squash at the local ymca okay i got it i got it we're just talking about our experiences squash, squash was a game i learned to play for my dad but the idea uh, but and and badminton as well because it's basically badminton against the oh, i love badminton uh, that was it, fun because the because game. the shuttlecock doesn't hurt when yeah. you get hit in the head with it exactly it's so light and but, i could say that word right, i mean podcast. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it does. But, but if we go if we go <laughs> south and we go way south, they have the most advanced version of this game that I would love to try mm-hmm. one day. I'd yeah. love to try it once. I would love to play high life. Yeah. I was oh, thinking, I, it'll I was thinking cool, our, but I'm scared. I was thinking like a squash court is more like a high light court compared to racquetball where it's wider. Yeah. Right? yeah. So But high light, they go hundred and eighty miles an hour with the pelota. So I would love to What's have- what's the name of the sport that it's essentially squash but they play it in um in star trek oh oh what was that Uh, are they like bouncing off the walls and stuff it's been on tng it's been on deep space nine it's been in lower decks it's not dumping everyone no no dumb jot the the, uh, uh, bumper pool yeah Yeah. Uh, dabo is is basically roulette and it's not wrecked gino that's coffee and it's not parisi squares (laughs) No, it is Parisi. Yes, it is Parisi Squares. You're right. Parisi Squares? Parisi Squares. Okay. Yes. That, that I thought right. Parisi Squares was something else. All right. There we go. Yeah. So um, I will. here's a ball game. According, that, uh, sorry. According to Memory Alpha, they're just calling it racquetball. What? But they they're, have, uh, they're also very wrong. Yeah. They have different courts that mm-hmm. they're using for Enterprise and, uh, sorry, for Next Gen and DS9. DS9 is the one where they're on the hollow deck mm-hmm. and it's got like targets. Yeah. All over the walls. <laughs> yeah, slightly different variant of it. Yeah. Um, I will say that um there is there is a ball sport that I did play as a kid that I did enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um again, because the ball is so tiny if you get hit in the head, even if all of your siblings hit you in the head with this ball, it's not that big a deal. Um and it really is a game of our time. Pro Kadima. <laughs> Pro Kadima, yo, you're gonna have wooden to paddles it. with a tiny little neon ball that you play at the beach. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But Pro Kadima is like like the brand name, I guess. It was like all the rage in the '80s, and I don't see it anymore. Yeah, you get like a little wooden paddle, kind of like a, like an oversized ping pong paddle. Yeah, like a like a big ping pong, like the size of a kid's face, you know, so yeah. bigger than a ping pong paddle, mm-hmm. um, and uh, a, so, a neon ball. So, so two words, yeah. Pro, yeah, Kadima. 
Yeah. Kadima. K A D I M A. I thought you were saying one word. Pro Kadima. Pro Kadima. Yes. Uh, I have, uh, I have not played this. Oh, no? It, it's, it's ping pong on a beach. I mean, kind of, but kind of. But you can't bounce the ball because it's sand. Right. Yeah. Cause if it goes in the sand, it just thuds. And, yeah. uh, but you can dive for it. And it's like, it's like ping pong meets volleyball. So, so the ball itself, is it like a ping pong ball? No, no, it's, it's squishy. Oh, okay. But it's not, it's not, um, nerf. It's just, it's a, like a plastic air filled ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah. And it's, it's how many players? How many paddles do you have? And you, so you played this on the beach. You like playing this game? On the beach all the time. Absolutely. Okay. Cause it's one of these games that you play and you talk and you're laughing and you're, yeah. everybody's having a good time and nobody's keeping score and everybody's who's on whose team. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's really just bouncing a ball between people and some people get like super serious about it, but really eventually it just de- devolves into you guys want to go swimming. Yeah. Let's go swimming. <laughs> like, yeah, someone gets too serious and you just ignore them. <laughs> it's it's just it's just fun it's kind of like kind of like hacky sack would you get sometimes where it was more about just kicking the kicking it around Again? when you're when you're in a group when you're in a group or it can yes it can devolve into let's hit someone with it i mean a lot of the games no play. no not even that no it's just there were two kinds of hacky sack players there were the yes. really serious ones that could do all the tricks and then there were the people who just played for the hell of it and then there were the potheads and then there were some people that were in both groups <laughs> Well, we, uh, I was in Mitch, neither group. When you and... are, have a cloud of green around your head and you can do all the tricks, it's kind of wild. Hey, uh, yeah. So if Dizzle is still listening to this podcast, uh, former Big Daddy Dizzle, um, we used to play a lot. When uh, Dizzle was my roommate, we used to play a lot of hacky sack in the basement because it had an eight foot ceiling and there wasn't any any furniture around. And he would invite some of his friends over and we'd have a little hacky sack uh, circle going. And it was all about... Um, <laughs> all of my games are going to have this common thread. It's, oh, no. It, it's all about who can do the fanciest trick before somebody hits you. God. And it was all like trying to do these like fancy tricks. And then eventually you'd be like so concentrated going on, you wouldn't notice the guy that whack and then he'd just hit you. And it was really, really funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your idea of fun is very different than mine. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and then I joined the army and became a martial artist. I enjoy I getting punched know. in the head, apparently. Yeah. Ah. Okay. I I've been hearing I've been hearing a lot about this game called pickleball. Everybody goes nuts over is pickleball. That, is that not that pro Kadima? Is not pickleball? I just it showed up in a pro Kadima thing, and it looks like it's essentially a pro Kadima paddle with a wiffle ball. Yes. Yes. So, so you took it and you made it something that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we do. That's what we do. Ah. Uh, Suck it up. And you gave it a name that just sounds stupid. It's pickleball. Like I like pickles. I don't want to play pickleball. Just looking at that ball, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, wiffle ball. That was a game we played. Oh, man. But there's like a pro, there's a professional series of wiffle ball players now. Yeah, but wiffle ball was really the game that you played because you didn't have enough people or space for a real baseball or softball game. Right. So in our front yard, we had trees there was the home plate tree right there was first second and third and so that that was pretty much wiffle ball was was doing that or you know um kickball which you is can play oh my ball. god i love kickball you Speaking can play wiffle ball anywhere like if you're willing to destroy lamps inside <laughs> right like yeah well there is that it's, you it's, had a few times when mom came home and was like <sighs> Vox. <laughs> Sonorous middle name Vox. Sonorous Son- Batman Vox. Sonorous middle name Vox is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's, I, I that's I, my middle name now. <laughs> it's, 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 I, I was I was gonna say echoing. <laughs> Echo. Sonorous, Sonorous echoing, echoing Vox. 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 That actually that works really well. well. <laughs> um but yeah, like wiffle ball and kickball all use the same thing. I mean, sometimes we did baseball, sometimes we did softball, but you know, I, I wasn't very good at any of those. Now, uh, it, not you particularly, but uh, <laughs> this is a, your uh, your little sister worked in a bar. Yes, and the bar that she worked. I can at, say the name of the bar because it no longer exists. Yes. Mighty Quinn's. The Mighty Quinn's. Yeah. The, the the thing is that the bar. What and other bars in the area were part of an adult kickball. Yeah, league. a bar league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
That's amazing. I mean, we have so many t-shirts from the kickball games. Yeah. I they used to be my running shirts, but I would just grab her her Mighty Quinn's kickball shirts because they just got the 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 shirts in different colors each year. Yeah. Kickball was so much fun. Kickball, it was fun ball, just... not in school. It was fun with people who yeah. were nice to me. The the problem I had I had a lot of problems. Kickball, a kickball, the red kickball. <laughs> the regulation red kickball can create a bruise the same size and same color on your thigh. You don't have to ask me how I know. Did did you did you guys ever get stuck and I, I, this is one of these great like schoolyard things of our generation. Did you ever get stuck where the red kickball was taken by that other group of kids so you got stuck with the yellow one? No, we never had a yellow one. No, the stupid yellow ball. It was like one size smaller. It never went in a straight line. It was always yeah. Red. It would always end up on the it's roof. Wonky. Yeah, no, yeah. you'd, you'd get the kickball out, and then like everybody be playing, and one goes off, and you go and you grab another one from the bin, and it's it's half deflated. I'm gonna. Oh, the game's over. I'm gonna say this in in saying one size too small, never ran straight, and always <laughs> ended up on the roof. You're describing me. the one thing the one thing i will say i have never been accused of being too small so i have a i have a sense memory Mm. of the the, sound of a kickball that pink sound of a kickball oh yeah i love that (laughs) um i so there were a lot of different games that we played um but you were i had my little intro is like get outside Mm -hmm. get some fresh air um so there's there's this meme going around that that people of our generation uh were sent out of the house and told not to come back until after until it got dark out, right? Like that mm-hmm. was our our curfew. But I grew up that we would go in the summertime to Fire Island. Okay. And when we were over and this sounds so bougie, but it's it's totally bougie. When we were over in Fire Island, it was okay, we've had dinner. It's like seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. Wait, wait, leave let, the boat. Let me make it sound even more bougie because you took you took yeah. your thirty nine foot sailboat. It's not thirty. It was a thirty four foot. Thank you very much. Oh. Take your thirty four foot. Your that doesn't make it much better. <laughs> <laughs> take take your take take your personal thirty nine. We probably wouldn't have fit in the marina, but is yeah. Whisper thirty. No, uh, whisper is a thirty six. Okay. Yeah. That's your mother's boat. Yes. You, because your parents have two different sailboats. Because they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, wait, they tried wait, to share I'm it. Sorry. It didn't work. I'm sorry. That doesn't make it much better because after the, vo- <laughs> the divorce, they still had two sailboats. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they, they had one sailboat. They got divorced. They tried to share it. Guess what? Yeah. That doesn't work. Yeah. To the sailboat. But then an, an, enough money to get another sailboat. That's, that's awful night. No. No. Yeah. Anyway, oh, but I won't even tell you about the kids' sailboat. But anyway, wait, what? <laughs> it was the Tipsy Turtle, right? No, no, no. no it was D minor. D minor. Tipsy it. Turtle was their first boat before they had most of us. <laughs> um. So anyway, so this 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 fleet, this armada of sailcraft <laughs> belonging to Nutty's family. Anyway, there's it da- was there's get your- off the boat and don't come back. So we were out and I, I'm sure it wasn't that late, but I, it was usually, um, I, it feels like it must have been past 10 o'clock, but I don't know because I was a kid and time is different and I'm time blind. But I can tell you that many of the other kids, they were out until their parents shambled back to their boats from the bar. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, they would go, they would have dinner and they would stay at the, cause there was a nice little restaurant and then they'd be at the bar drinking all night and then they'd be shambling back and it's like, mm, do you need a flashlight? But anyway, we played manhunt because uh, yes. manhunt when, uh, it's dark is awesome. And it's yeah. so dangerous when I think about it now. Like when I think about, would I let, those under my care do this. I'm not sure. Uh, because we're so describe, running around. Describe the rules that you played with very briefly. So manhunt, it's basically own. like hide and seek, yeah. right? But if somebody sees you, they have to actually tag you, right? So they can't just find you. They have to tag you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can, you can ditch them and you can hide again. 
um, until, um, you know, they find everybody and all that. Uh, and, and, and there was a safe space. It was the water fountain. Um, but it was, um, the water fountain. Yeah. At the marina. It was a drinking fountain. Oh, okay, okay. Like a drinking fountain. They always fountain. have those. Like Come a, now. <laughs> I, I was imagining like marble Travy fountain. Yeah. Okay. Like so, Rome. so the difference of language, water fountain, that's where you go to drink. You know, we, I very rarely call it a drinking fountain, but, um, so, uh, we're running around on docks. There is water right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Many of us, depending on how old we are, but m- and and many of my friend the the kids I was playing with, they're running around without life jackets on, in the dark, hiding. And then as soon as they're seen, they're running. We were hiding under the docks. We were hiding, uh, like because there was um where the water fountain was was where the bathrooms were, and it was a uh like a ramp that that went up on either side, and it was um probably about like a story, a story and a half high. So like we would find ways and be underneath in the tick filled areas. Um, and it was basically, you could hide anywhere as long as you didn't start going to the finger piers. Like you weren't too far away. You were in the main hub. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And then if you were, as you got older, the big man hunt happened up by the beach because that pavilion was connected to the nature walk. And you could hide anywhere in the nature walk. So the dunes with the, with the, the tall grass. No, no, it was the nature walk was in the, um, the tree area behind the dunes, okay. you know, with all those creepy looking trees. Sure. Yeah. Manhunt was epic. So Vox, you played, you played a lot of manhunt as well, didn't you? Yeah. Manhunt was something that was done. Um, predominantly I remember it from back in, well, it wasn't even uh, it, like I remember it from elementary school, but I remember it from. Uh, high school around the elementary school because it just happened to be down the way from us. We played it at night, in the middle of the oh, night. We played oh, it at night too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't play yeah. manhunt during you can't the play day. Manhunt during the day, you see people too easily. Yeah. And I've got like ridiculous memories of. Um, I think my dumbest memory ever of that was like when I was sixteen or so. I was playing like at sixteen, seventeen, which is a little old to be playing games like that, but. You know, at least I wasn't drunk at the time. We, and, we were having fun. We weren't on drugs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh yeah. But they, but so I'm running around and I, I found a, you know, those, the big cement holders for garbage cans so don't, kids don't kick them down. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I found one of those without a garbage can in it. So I hopped in it, put my, bla- put my black hood up and ducked down on, un- ducked down in there. And there's guys running around looking for me for a half an hour or so. That's when the game gets fun is everybody, everybody, when you get tagged, you're recruited into the the mob hunting people. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we, we same. Uh, yeah. And at this point, everybody's looking for me. And um, yeah, one of the guys is like two of the guys are having a conversation with one of them leaning on the garbage stand next to me. And this is why I say we have two different physical paths when it comes to being like fast at the time I was agile I, I, I was faster than I am by faster than I ever was. So I leapt up clear onto the lip of the thing from inside of it, yelled something at a guy, smacked him in the back of the head and went running. Like I leapt off and went running and I run around the corner and there's this local random guy who's drunk. Like he's got to be, he's completely, you could smell it on him drunk. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he comes like, he comes at me like I'm, uh, he's, freaking out that i stole something from his house and all of this and it's like why did you do that weirdest experience it's like look I, like yeah i, I did but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but it's like he he freaked out on me like i was i was doing something like i'd like i had killed someone or something mm. and just the most ridiculous moment but it, you always have moments like that oh yeah like, like there was another game uh other than manhunt we played there which was literally just I, I don't know if you call it a game, but we'd just get all the golf balls we could get and an aluminum baseball bat, and we'd sit at one end of the field, and a, everybody else would sit at the other end of the field, and somebody ping golf balls at them. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrible. So um I grew up next to a golf course. Yeah. Um, And we'd jump the fence, and we yeah. would go and find all the golf balls that were lost. Mm-hmm. Um 
I don't think we ever so, did this, but so did someone, have- someone somewhere would then sell them back. Oh, yeah. Did you have to go around the golf course to get to the dock of your private yacht? No, they or? were in different directions. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the golf ball thing, too, is like we I don't even know where we got the, them the, because there the wasn't a golf club was close. towards the lakes. <laughs> hey, hey, Tech, do you remember a golf club being anywhere close to that? No, no, our, our golf club, the golf club in our town was at the top of the hill where the, yeah. where, where the clean people lived. We, the unwashed, we were down yes, at the base right. of the hill in the swamp between the two lakes. This is huh. true. Like quite literally, we were on swampland. Yeah. We, we lived in a swamp <laughs> like between two the lakes. The first, the first year we moved there, my, uh, my mother freaked out and thought we had an earthquake because the entire house shifts whenever a bus drove by. Yeah. We were on swamp land. <laughs> yeah, it was, my my ooh. dad still lives one street back from where your childhood home yep. was. Yep. That good old swamp land. Good old swamp land. Yeah, see, I grew up in the bayou. <laughs> yes, the would, northern bayou. The northern bayou. Yeah, <laughs> with my mom always telling me that not to play the foosball. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but there's a... I want to mention one more game uh, that we played. Uh Outdoor. Uh, so we played a lot of manhunt. Now, I think we were in different groups at the time because you were playing manhunt by the elementary school. We played the urban version. We were downtown around the parking garage. Well, see, you got to you gotta remember we went to different schools, right? I went to right. that fancy Catholic school. You went to that <laughs> fancy Catholic school. I I went to the school of the arts. Okay, they're both public schools. They're yeah, public. that fancy Catholic school was the uh, was the highest rate of teenage pregnancy and <laughs> uh, pr- and like incarceration by students of anywhere in the city. It was uh, and, yeah, and mine, and mine was the magnet school for all the rednecks from all the the, the villages that were around our our town. But, yes, um, we would play the same game, but we would play it at downtown. Uh, among the parking garages and all the one way streets <laughs> and where all the, the all, all the the things were so you're you're like ducking behind mailboxes and phone booths remember those things uh um, yeah they're still around we live in ontario we see phone booths all the time as a matter of fact there's somebody photographing one the other night because they were like oh yeah. my gosh there's yeah. a phone booth yeah, we, we were downtown in ottawa having <laughs> having dinner and there's uh, one in our town it's right down by the saint hubert <laughs> but there was a there was a gentleman with a very very fancy uh medium format film camera on a tripod and he was taking very fancy very artsy photographs of like the last <laughs> excuse me the last phone booth in town in the byword at least in the byword yeah um but so we played in different neighborhoods because I was playing in the downtown group you were playing yep. uh you were playing at the base of the hill but one game that I know we played together when when you came back to town in in high school, like we played mm-hmm. together. But we have a mutual friend, uh, and he had property. His family had property on the base of the big hill in our town. So he, ah yes, his um the wood lot uh, his his um property backed up onto public land. Just this huge wood lot going up a big big hill. Mm. And then it was a bunch of teenagers in the woods making up rules as they go, hunting each other in the woods. I learned more about camouflage and mm-hmm. stealth and how to move without someone seeing you in the woods playing those games than I ever did in the army. Look. Now, I think I should have prefaced all of the games that we were talking about yeah. before with this. Would you... Let your nibblings go and do this. I would. 100%. 100% let my nibblings go into the woods and play this game. Do you think their parents will? Yes. My sister? Yes. Your sisters and brothers? Probably. Depends on the sibling. Many of them probably not. This was a perfectly innocent game of hunting people. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to let a bunch of kids run around a dock without life jackets on and g- diving yeah, okay. into tick filled well, areas. Well, okay, so. So, so that's one thing. We didn't have ticks. But we were not in a, in a tick zone. And uh, there's no water up there because it's on a hill. Uh, and there's we, water. It's just frozen. Well, no, we, we weren't playing this in winter. In winter, we were going sledding, which is an entire other thing. Right. We, we can talk about winter games another time. But. Uh, what we would do is you would go to the hardware store and get three quarter inch uh, PVC piping that we, you would use in a house and you would chop it into sword like lengths. Yep. And then get the foam pipe insulation, 
wrap it uh, around the PVC and then use hockey tape or duct tape if you were poor. Uh, use duct tape to wrap it up and then you would make a sword-like foam-covered plastic object. And it was... It was the, just a game of manhunt. It was, I am going, I am the one, I am hunting people. But now it's, you don't count as out until I whack you with a sword. Oh, my gosh. So it was basically like, mm-hmm. uh, we have no protective gear on. I mean, I, 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 yeah. We had no protective I, gear on, but we were running through the woods with foam swords, just whacking the ever-loving Jesus. I am Jesus so glad I wasn't friends with you as a kid because <laughs> I would have hated you. Actually, I wouldn't have been friends with you. But the thing is, is that our mutual friend, and I hope he's listening to this podcast, uh, was bigger than us, stronger than us, tougher than us, and more dexterous than us. Th- than us. So he would always win. And he was a big fan of books by a guy named R.A. Salvatore. And his oh, dad had a heat yeah. gun. So he would bend the yep. plastic into scimitars. And then he would go around as Dritz Doerden, the, <laughs> the, 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 the twin scimitar-wielding dark elf of Forgotten Realms fame. But he would go around with twin scimitars, and you just Whack. couldn't win. He was a foot taller than us. He was like 50 pounds heavier than us. He was just bigger, tougher, better, meaner. And it was his land, so you kind of couldn't complain because you wanted to go back and play next game. Uh, so it was really just a race for second place. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, this is this is the sort of game that we played outside. So uh, in the few minutes we have left, I, I want to ask, it's horrible outside. It's snowing. There's a foot of snow out. It's raining. It's raining cats and dogs. You can't go outside. What kind of, you have friends over or you go over to your friend's house. You're not going to go outside. You're going to play games inside. What kind of inside games? So did you guys play? I was thinking of this earlier and I was thinking of a generation before mine, okay. my father's generation. You described uh, playing indoor hacky sack. Mm-hmm. Their game of choice was indoor airsoft or paint, uh, BB guns. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. Um, several stories from my father about where scars came from. <laughs> about about uh just sheer ridiculous traumas in, in, uh, induced upon one another I, so I, i'm i'm a little bit just a little bit removed from that ridiculousness i remember a coworker of mine who's a generation above me uh that they would play manhunt but they would play with pellet guns mm-hmm. where you had to I've, tag someone with the pellet gun but they would wear life jackets Mm. So that would the, the, at least like the the blaze orange. So the blaze orange life jacket like precu- precluded you from hiding because you can't hide blade you can't hide blaze orange in the woods. And yeah. Second of all, um, uh, it would help absorb some of the impact from the pellet gun. I am not recommending this game. This game is dumb. Like, do not play this. Oh, I mean, I've played variants on that. Um, I played them at a ridiculously older age and uh just about had the cops come after me for or no i did have the cops called on me for one one of them so yeah yeah stop not, snitching not on yourself man this is a podcast no. it's not time for you to snitch on yourself so no no they, they, we're, yeah. we're indoors the weather outside is frightful uh what game are we playing uh it's uh, nutty. What uh, before we get into that, this whole airsoft thing reminds me of um your first house that you had two roommates. And <laughs> what was the punishment for whatever somebody didn't do? They didn't do dishes and... Right. Well, no, it's it's we had house punishment number one for things like you forget to pay a bill or you leave a floater in the toilet or you you didn't do the dishes when it was your turn. You had house punishment number one, which meant that you had to stand across the living room with your hands behind your head and everybody else got an airsoft gun and they let you know how unpleased they were with you. And uh, it was really, really fun trying to get the security deposit back and going through the inspection at uh, at, at at the end of my uh, at the end of my lease because like what are all these little dimples in the wall? I don't know. They were there when we got here. Certainly not airsoft pellets. That's the best way to put it. It's certainly not what it is. Certainly not. Um, I certainly didn't put a fist through the wall. So yeah. I, so I, I when cer- we moved in together. The rule was there will never be an airsoft gun that is shot in this 
house Lame. because when I would visit, I would step on airsoft pellets because you don't wear shoes in a Canadian house and you're stepping on. You think Legos bad? Uh uh-uh. uh. Airsoft is worse. Man, but, but listen, I I didn't even talk about ball tag yet. But I'm listening to this podcast. Like I sound like such a monster. You were yes, absolutely. No, we a were not monster. No, a monster would be someone who does it to one person. We were mutually doing it to each other. <laughs> so we were sadomasochists. Inside, I, I, I will say that I am very good with inside games um, because we had a lot of them. We had you be on the boat and it's raining. You can't go outside. We got lots of those. Um, hurricanes. Hurricanes hit a lot. Uh, Hurricane Gloria. We had no power, no lights uh, for like a week. And a bunch of other times. So, yeah. Also, my parents did not like the t- TV that much either. So, yeah, we got games. We got games galore. Um, uh, your classic card games. Uh, we were very big on rummy. We were be- very big on, um, not rummy, uh, gin rummy. There we go. That one. Uh, very big on like 31 and. St- Spit. Oh my gosh. Spit could get violent. Um, I'm so glad you knew 31 because I thought that was a Canadian. I thought that was a French game, but you. you no, bitch. I knew 31. I knew 31 and Casino. That's another one. Uh, and then, um, uh, but then Rummy Cube ah, was our Rummy game. Cube. Like Rummy Cube is the game. Now, if you want to get into a giant fight and so, somebody's going to end up crying, and it's probably because your dad's cheating, um, <laughs> play Monopoly. But if you want to have oh, a good no. time, play Rummy Cube. Okay, just play Rummy Cube. It's so much better, and it's math. Um, so much better. Uh, the the. Yeah, so like we we were good with games. We were definitely good with games. Um we made up a game called Pinochle, which is not Pinochle. We called it Pinochle, but it is not Pinochle. Okay. We had like a little old Fisher Price um you know the little peoples for Fisher Price, but yeah. this one was so old it was made of wood and it wasn't even the right shape anymore. But that was our Pinochle. And whoever was it would have to hide it and everybody would have to look for it. And so it's like a reverse hide and seek. Yeah. That was, that was a big one. Down the toilet flush. I no. win. <laughs> oh, and we also had, um, uh, Muppets. Uh, so we had like a bunch of the Muppets, which I now have. Um, and, uh, we would put on shows with the Muppets. That was another game that we would play. How about you, Vox? Play. What, what, what yeah. were your indoor games? Oh, sorry. One more. Because this was epic once when it came out, and definitely a sign of the time. Trivial Pursuit. Oh yes. How about you, right. Um, Largely, or like, there's there's one big one that hasn't been said, but byproduct of Canadian basements being all cement, uh, you could throw a lot of stuff in them. <laughs> <laughs> right? You could throw a lot of stuff in a Canadian basement. Yeah, you could. And people aren't going to have a problem with that. So um, I can't remember. Like there was there was a friend of mine. And it's gonna be, it's gonna feel awful if it was you and I don't remember exactly. <laughs> a friend of mine who had had like every G.I. Joe known to man. That wasn't me. No. Okay. A friend of mine had every G.I. Joe known to man. And what we would do is we would, um, we'd set them all up, you know, Cobra, Joe, all over the basement on, on everything that's in there in strategic formations and everything. And then we would grab tennis balls and just wail on each other's side. <laughs> like I don't know why I remember this, but this is what we would do, and it was just like. How old were you at this point? Thirty-four. <laughs> no, that's no. That was no. Not 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 this time. Um, not that young. <laughs> no. So but, you're but, like our basements are all cement and pretty good. Yeah. All I like was flashing back is to a lot of the basements in the neighborhood I grew up in. Yeah. Um, had dirt. <laughs> So like yeah. half our basement Un- was a dirt basement. crawl space. Yeah. I recall that. Um, I, yeah, you get a dirt like cold storage space, right? Yeah, and then or or just dirt. Um yeah. and then and then um my cousin had an old coal chute. Oh wicked. <laughs> and then so, we would take the old coal and draw on the walls. So what you're saying is mm. um you came a long way from the dirt to the bougie. <laughs> not that long, not that far. It was it was just to walk down the street. <laughs> She's got the turquoise on her wrist. Oh gosh. 
<laughs> but uh yeah, like I remember those kinds of things too. Like and uh the other one of course though was just the land of pure imagination that was D D. Oh yeah. Mm. Like from nine on I've been I was I've been playing role playing games. So yeah. I started I started at fifteen, um and I think this deserves an entire episode to talk about our experiences with role playing games. Uh, yeah. Um uh this is where uh you know, well, we've been friends. I was in the sixth grade. I think you were in fourth grade when we met playing a game of ball tag. And, mm, yeah. Uh, you moved away and then came back. We've been friends uh, this entire time, and it's always been around role playing game. Yeah. And all of those, I'm I'm just going to take those as read for this episode of the podcast and move on to other things. Uh, for me, it was cards. Uh, if I'm at home and uh, I can't go out, uh, we're playing cards and. Uh, uh, I find it very funny, nutty, for a game with uh, for a family that has such a, a nautical history. Your your whole family uh, sails, and um, your family uh, a bunch of merchant mariners. Mm-hmm. Um, that cribbage is not a game that you know because cribbage has such a nautical history. My my mom knew cribbage, mm-hmm. um, but um, it just wasn't a game that we played. There's a lot of games that we tried, and it just wasn't one of the ones that we played. I guess I don't. If my older siblings played it, I can't tell you. But crib is a game that I grew up with. In my family, crib uh, is a game that you needed to know to go to school. There were uh, there were bench <laughs> there were benchmarks that they would tell us as kids, as young children. They would tell us that in order to go to school, you needed to be able to do the following things. You had to be able to play cribbage because that teaches you to count to at least the number thirty one. Uh, you had to be able to tie your shoes by yourself into a bow, and you had to be able to read time on a clock with hands. How was I ever allowed to go to school? <laughs> All right, there's a bunch of our. I got one of those three. Be able to go to one school of, right now. One of those three. Yeah. So, so this was the thing that I had to. I this. These are the benchmarks that I had to hit in my family to go to kindergarten. So by hmm. age five, I'm playing cribbage. Now I'm not very good. And I'm still not very good as a, as a 40 plus year old dude. Um, I, I try real hard, but I still get whomped by my dad. And sometimes by me, you got skunked. Uh, I did, I did get skunked. But Recently. Cri- but cribbage is the game that we play a lot of in my family. Now, Vox, um, we grew up in relatively the same neighborhood, but yep. you have a nautical background. Uh, mm-hmm. Is cribbage a game that you learned before? Did you learn it in the Navy? Did you play it in the Navy? Is it as big of a nautical thing as I think it is? Go ahead. I mean, I certainly in the in the um, in certain messes, cribbage was a thing, but it wasn't in the in in the junior ranks mess ever. Okay. Um, I, I think by the, the, I know it's big in the wardroom. Yeah, I was going to say the ward the 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 wardroom and the the chiefs and POs mess is probably a bit bigger, but that's a generational thing, I think. Okay. Um, because navy wise, I don't know. By that time, we already had like you could bring DVDs in and stuff, sure. right? So we already had a big old TV in there and everything. And did you guys play much euchre? Uh, euchre was as I was going to mention euchre. Euchre is a high school thing for me. Okay, I avoided more class playing euchre than for any other reason. Um, my entire like senior senior year, the the grade thirteen year, um, which is not because I. For anybody who's uninitiated in old school Ontario, it's not because I failed a grade. It's because grade 13 was what prepped you to go to university that I never went to. Right. Um, so grade 13, I skipped about 40% of my classes easily just to play Euchre. Um, Did- and, but I learned, I learned cribbage before because my father played, uh, well, my parents played, but my father, my, my, my parents played, but it wasn't ever like it was more of a when we saw family, we played thing. Right. It wasn't an everyday thing. Did um did you ever play the East Coast variant? When I joined the army, we played a lot of the East Coast variant of Euchre, a game called Pepper. Okay. Which is I don't a, recall that. No, I can't remember what the differences in the rules are, but it's basically uh Pepper is a Euchre from Newfoundland, but you play okay. the same deck where you've only got nines and ups. Well, um, Euchre Euchre, I've never liked as a card game. Hmm. Uh, I've uh, never liked it as a card game uh, the, because yeah. it, it's very predetermined where if all four players around the table uh, are all of the same relative skill level, mm-hmm. uh, the game is sort of automatic where depending on the cards that you have in your hand, it sort of dictates what you have to play. So if you have 
four players of the same relative skill level, you can play the game open-handed, and it's automatic. Uh, you play this, I have to play this, I have to play this, I have to play this. And it's sort of an automatic game, and that really sort of displeases me because... I don't think the way other people do, and I've tried to play Euchre with people before, and they get very mad at me because I play the wrong thing. Um, yeah, but you know what the beauty of that is? Sometimes you play the wrong thing to disrupt their thinking, and you win. Yeah, and sometimes you lose, and your partner gets mad at you. Um, yeah, that's why you got, that's why you got to have a good partner, yeah. right? A partner who knows the occasionally... This wasn't a how to play the game bo- yeah. podcast, by the way. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so, but it's... Yeah. So, Euchre, a game, Euchre is a game that I tried to play. I didn't like. There's other variations of game of games of so Euchre to people who don't know is a game of trumps. Yeah, where one suit is more powerful than the others, and you're trying to always trump other people's cards. Um, no relation. Uh, yeah, but, he ruined that word. Yeah, he ruined that word. But, yeah, by by adopting the T instead of the D, he ruined the word. Yeah, there are. <laughs> Other, I think his dad had more to do with that. But anyways, um, there are other games in the same ilk that I like a lot more. One's called Moonshot and one's called Wizard. And Wizard is bloody brilliant. Uh, but I didn't play that till I was an adult. Yeah. Um, we played a lot of Crib growing up, a lot of 31, um, a lot of uh, a game called Paquet Valeur or the Packet Stealer or the Packet Stealer. Mm. where you would place cards down into one of four piles on the on the table and if you had a hand if you had a card in your hand that matched the top card of one of the piles you could steal the whole pile and then whoever had the highest heap would win at the end it's basically yeah. war sounds sounds like uh, these days they would call it amazon at, at, yeah the, the, <laughs> so the package thief come on we had a game ah. called war <laughs> yeah and it yeah. really had to do with, like, you would put Whoever, out, yeah, who had the higher card. Yeah. So just imagine playing war, but you have four dead zones on the table where you can drop cards on the table. Mm-hmm. So it's a strategy about what you put on top. So it actually to matters. Mm-hmm. There's actually playing in it yeah, instead of just, war is just, uh, how how did you shuffle? <laughs> yeah, um, which is why I love the fact that in Vegas they have casino war. Yes. Yeah. Um, Paquet uh, Valeur yeah. is, is like in my family, it was one of the very, very first card games that we teach to very young children, to toddlers, to how to hold your cards, how to make sure other people can't see what you have, how to drop cards on the table, how to pick up cards. It's yeah. the game that you learn to play before we murder you at crib or when we take your milk money because you, you can't play 31 without at least a quarter on the table because we would all quote, quote gamble. Yeah. Um, so, uh, board games, uh, monopoly. I always hated because you just cheat at monopoly. Risk is even worse because everybody cheats at risk and risk is takes, bad. And takes two out. takes two days to play. Yeah. Uh, but was there a, uh, was there a big board game nutty that you guys played? Um, well, Monopoly was terrible. Uh, the game of life. Um, I gotta tell you, playing the, I downloaded it one time because it was free or whatever. And you and I played, uh, when we had a power outage or something. It's and trauma. I was so upset at the game of life. Oh my goodness. The game of life is such a, Oh man, like I bet the Duggars love that game. <laughs> I mean, it is, it Let's is so backwards. Kids. Yes. Well, no, actually they only, they do limit you on the amount of kids that you can have, but I always Which... assume that was just because the car's not that big. Like, oh, you didn't get somebody, a second car? As, <laughs> as somebody <laughs> Up- upgrade to the van from a, a, a mm. large family, I understand that what the nuclear family is and all of that and that we yeah. were not part of it. But no, it was like, you're successful if you get married and you can only have kids if you get married and you can only have a career if you get married. Like there's all of these things that, Oh, it's, it's terrible. It is yeah. just terrible. I, I kind of, I know that people have done this, but I kind of want to like do the game of life called the wage gap, you know, and throw in like extra things like that. Um, but anyway, it, it was, it was awful, uh, trying that again. So I remember playing the game of life. I remember Candyland. Candyland was big. I, lo- and that was when we were real little, but Snakes I loved and ladders. Candy. Shoots and ladders. Um, I wouldn't even come shoots and ladders. Shoots. It's snakes. It's not shoots. Snakes. It's snakes. 
Okay. It's snakes in line. Animal comfort. Look, PETA and their let's not harm snakes things. I've never, <laughs> we never had it. So it's not a big, I, I'm not it's, invested I'm in kidding, this. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, I don't know if this is a Berenstein, Berenstein thing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, snakes in line. uh, some friends had mousetrap. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I always wanted to play and they're like, oh, I don't want to play that game. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Hungry, hungry hippo. Uh, but no, the big one was Simon. Beep, boop, boop, boop. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Yeah. Where you had to do the pattern. Yep. Simon was huge. And my family definitely, yes. When oh, Bop it came Bop out, it. we Twist got it. very into Bop it because it was basically Simon says, but, but more. Um, but I was an adult when Bop It came out. So, <laughs> but yeah, Bop It. Oh, uh, Simon says Bop It. Oh, Connect Four. Um, Connect Four was a big one. And, um, Othello. Uh, uh, how could I forget? Because isn't Othello just go? No, it's, it's slightly different. Um, but, uh, it's, we played Othello a lot. Um, chess and checkers and, um, Parcheesi. And things like that. Yeah. They were all in the same, you know, everybody had that chess checkers park cheesy set where it was all the same thing. Backgammon. Yeah. That was it. Ba- backgammon. backgammon. The backgammon. Um, backgammon was a game that my dad got really, really big on in the Navy. Mm. And, mm. um, I, my dad was in the Navy in the seventies. Um, I, I, I used to play with him when I was a kid, but I haven't played it since I was a kid. Mm. Mm. And I still remember because we had these velvet lined leatherette cups that you would roll the dice in and then Very roll fancy. onto the board. But no, it was this little folding uh, backgammon. But I still remember the sound of the dice mm-hmm. in that in that little dice cup that you would throw. Uh, but I don't want to play backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, little dice cup was was uh, yeah yeah it yeah. was pretty cool. There was there were all those uh, I don't know games. Tended to be a contrivance a lot of the time to like mouse trap. Way too much to that. Way too many things to lose, and then the game breaks, and you you can't yeah. play it anymore. And, um, euchre. Well, like when we go back to euchre, euchre was when I actually I played um in the navy more, but it was in shore offices. And I've seen euchre fist fights before. Oh, oh yeah, S- like somebody, that somebody's game. Doing, just, somebody's uh, there's a pair doing signs under the table. They get caught for table talk, and then there's a fight. or no, it was this was partners getting mad at each other. Oh really? Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like wow. yeah. Well, we had a very Isn't volatible shore office games? that time around. Isn't that just cards? I had to defuse that shore office a few times because I introduced them to a game called um oh what the heck is it? It's a space game, colony, colony or something like that. Okay, I probably have one of them over here. But it's it's essentially you play an alien race and you have diplomacy and attack and all this other stuff and whatever. And they got in they almost got in a fist fight over that. Like a sci fi diplomacy game. So I had to at some at a certain point go, All right, we're no longer playing games in here anymore. It was my first b- a good like leadership moment of I'm in a position of leadership and I'm stopping dumb crap. So <laughs> the, the um, one thing that, that I will say about games that we play as kids when you grow up is uh, that the the one thing that we have to be very very sure of is that never let money get in the way of a game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you want to gamble and if you want to play games for money, that is an entirely different thing. But don't just use money because you're bored. I remember being overseas and watching guys uh they were playing poker and there's a couple of guys that got $2500 in the hole on poker. And they weren't winning it back fast enough, so they switched the game from poker to blackjack. Oh, and no. then I. Uh, so the thing is, we had um, our materials technicians had a huge table that they would use as a cutting table for the fabrics that they would cut when they were making, you know, like tactical nylon stuff, and they were like cutting, uh, you know, fabrics and things. So this huge cutting table we would use to play D and D. The yeah. card players were using it as a poker table. So we mm. would our D and D game was always after the poker game. There was yeah. one day where I walked in where they had they had quit playing poker because it wasn't going fast enough. They'd moved on to blackjack, and these guys were twenty five hundred dollars in the hole. And what they were doing when I walked in is they were playing cut the high card for twenty dollars a play. What? Just the... just open the deck, just grab a deck of cards, oh, open man. it up. Whoever has the highest card wins twenty bucks. 
That that was the game. It was cut the high card for twenty bucks. They were to, at this point. It's it, you're no longer playing cards. It's just a gambling addiction. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The cards. So, see, in your family, we do the whole like everybody gets uh, a any, quarter, so that you've yeah. got three nickels for when you're playing thirty one to figure five out nickels. five nickels. What did I say? You said three. I meant five, uh, and to figure out you know when you're out or whatever. Um, and then for the crib tournaments, everybody's like, what is it? A, a, a loony, a toonie, whatever it is. Two bucks. Yeah. Two bucks. Anyway, yeah. shows how much I pay attention to this. And it's really just a nominal thing. But in my family, like that would have never happened. We would have never been able to use money. We would have been able to use tokens, Popcorn but man. never money because my parents were just they just raised us with this whole gambling is wrong. We, and for some of us, it worked because I just don't gamble. I, I did the lotto. Yeah. I'm like, what? I don't care. Um, and others, they, they love to gamble. So you, uh, there's we, no right yeah. or wrong way to do it. I mean, I won the lottery three times this week. Two dollars, two dollars in a free play. There you go. I, I won the lottery too. I, 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 I won 20 bucks this week by not playing the lotto. But, yeah. but you're all, but you're all, but I'm not, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But Vox, yeah. you're yeah. also an accomplished pie gal player. Uh, I wouldn't say accomplished, but well, well, you, you won big in Vegas that, at least once. Yeah. And then I've lost big in Vegas a few times too. So, right. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I don't think that. <laughs> I don't think that gambling, uh, gambling is like a lot of vices. Gambling is like drinking. In and of itself, it's not bad. It's, uh, when you start having a problem with it that you need to seek help. And if you have a problem with gambling or with drinking or with anything else in your life, please seek help. And if you don't know how, please reach out to us and we would love to help you. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean that legitimately, um, because it's, it's what I do. I love to help my friends, but mm -hmm. you know, um, same thing. I, like I grew up feeling the wet sting of a tennis ball across the back of my shoulder blades as we played games of ball tags between the portables and my school. Now, this is not saying that I, I want everyone to go out and throw tennis balls at each other tonight. It's just, it, this is what I grew up with. And maybe that makes me weird. Maybe it explains a lot about my childhood. Um, uh, you know, gamble and play within your limits, whatever they are, whatever your limits are. We suddenly went into a PSA and I love find it. Find a group of friends that will play within the limits. With. Yeah. I like to play my games of Dungeons and Dragons a certain way, and that doesn't fit with a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't gamble that. We're, we're changing tactics here. Just I'm, yeah, I am not playing D and D for money. No. Sorry, Vox. I know how much you like to kill my characters when you're DMing. <laughs> I am not playing D and D for money. I mean, it's it's look. You haven't played D and D until you've played every hit point as a dollar. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to go, bro. Oh, man, man, <laughs> oh, man, and I picked the wizard. Well, four bucks, and I'm out. There you go. Oh man. Uh, but please, uh, <laughs> friends, wireless listeners, what are the games you played as kids, and how did they shape you? And are you as traumatized by the games you played as I am, apparently? Well, no, you're not traumatized. There's something wrong with you because you think it was awesome. I want to play these games with my nibblings. Somebody get me a tennis ball. Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, everybody, and let us know what are your games. Bye. Bye, everyone. We want to give a very special thank you to our patrons, um, and there's going to be more information about that coming up. The patrons, listen in. I'm going to have another episode for you coming up. But um, thank you so much to our top tier Big Daddy patrons. Thank you to Jax, our top biggest daddy. Thank you to Jason and Rich the TT. Thank you to our patrons of the arts, Mark Cabot. Uh, sorry, I'm pausing there. Uh, the Encaffeinated One, different Mark. Um, and Melissa the Bathtub Mermaid and Susanna. And thank you to all of our other patrons who keep everything going. The the first time patron, uh, or rather our first patron, Shane. Thank you to Selgenor, Andy, Cliff, Greg, Harold, Hugh, Ian, 
Justine, Ken, Kinsey, Mike, PCAT, Radical Geek, Will, and Zach Mann. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Nutty Bites is produced by Nimlas Studios under a Creative Commons Attribution No Commercial Non-Derivatives 3.0 International License. That means you can't change it without my permission. You can share it and send it to your friends. Just link back to me, my site, and everything. We live at nimlas.org, which has links to everything social media, including facebook.com slash group slash Nutty Bites and patreon.com slash nukejoss or call 347-Nutty42. 